percentage of teenagers rate their school sex education as excellent? It's only 4%. Go away, go away. We're still arguing. <laughs> we're still arguing about the last one, uh, and it may, it may rumble on. Uh, we're into the last part of the last right stuff of the week. World famous agony aunt Dr. Miriam Stoppard here to help any parents watching today. I uh, talk about the birds and the bees, about sex, about relationships. Now, I, I had I, this is just a great story I heard the other day. Five-year-old girl, uh, mum comes to pick her up from uh, nursery, refuses to leave when mum's there. Why? Because her little boyfriend was still inside. You don't understand, mummy. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> love starts early. Well, <laughs> but I'm fascinated what you're supposed to say at that point. And, uh, well, what are the most common problems you hear about from parents? From, uh, about their teenage yeah. kids? Oh, yeah, about children, relationships and, and, and love. Oh, well, the, 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 the trouble starts, I guess, which parents have difficulty with, is at the teenage years. And it's the fact that the te teenager has become solitary, doesn't talk anymore, yeah. is sullen, is antisocial, is rude, you know, um, it, it actually chews you up, puts you down. And you feel as a parent, actually, that it's, you're just a hopeless case. You're never, you're never going to make it. You're never going to be a decent parent. Actually, the, the reassuring truth is, is that most parents are making a jolly good fist of it. And it's not entirely their fault. It's that teenagers, as a group, are extremely difficult. Communication with them is difficult. But there is a rule, Matthew, if you want to stay talking to your teenager, if you want to be the person that they come to, you've got to start very early. You've got to start being open and inviting your child into difficult conversations, yes. choosing teachable fact, moments. Jeremy Mills was saying earlier, earlier in the week about knives. You know, the idea that I, I think the, uh, the, the, the head of the Met Police is saying, you know, parents should ask their kids as they go out the door, have you got a knife? And Jeremy Mills is saying, if you do that, you're just going to get, no, 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 no. You've got to talk about, what do you make of these stories about knife crime? You've got to find Use a, a, a way around. Use what's in the paper. Use what's yeah. on telly to open up the conversation. Why do you think a kid to whom you have never spoken about an intimate topic in their life should suddenly become, want a conversation with you at 13 or 14 about sex? Good of point. course they don't. Good point. Uh, listen, uh, if your kids are facing problems with puppy love, broken hearts, getting dumped, finding a boy or girlfriend, being gay, having sex, wanting to have sex, not having sex, having a partner sleep over, if you're having trouble giving them the advice they need, give Miriam a call. 0207 173 is the number. And as you get dialing, well, it is Friday. We've got a photo casebook to entertain you. And this week, Mum Ariana finds her 15-year-old daughter, Beth, has been hiding something from her. Oh, heavens, what's this? But Beth said she was a virgin. Should I have a word? She's only 15. I'll have to talk to her. What are you doing with these? You've lied to me. I don't want to talk to you about this. You wouldn't understand. Oh, no. What have I done? I'm afraid she got a lot wrong there. Well, one, one in 20 girls under 16 is on the pill, and yet only one in three mothers of those girls is aware. If I, I have to tell you straight up that if I found that my daughter was on the pill, I would think it was a cause for, uh, for celebration. Because she thought it on, all... How old is your daughter we're talking well, about? Well, I know, we come to that point later, because the, if the, the law comes in at, at another point. But... As a general rule, it means my daughter's thought it through and she's trying to act responsibly and she's taken the correct action and she's made sure that she doesn't have an unplanned pregnancy, which, as a teenager, is a complete catastrophe. In, and in this situation, um, you know, to, I, I, I think the conversation should have been a much, had a much more positive start. Can and not necessarily this? wagging the, the, uh, the, the pills in, in front of your daughter. Can I, can I give you another scenario? Uh, a friend of a friend has uh, found... Uh, condoms in uh, his 15 year old son's uh, sock drawer. Mm. Uh, no idea what to do. Mm. Leave them there because it doesn't want to be thought about going through the sock drawer. The sock drawer was open, didn't de delve inside it. Uh, what would you do? In no, that? no, you've got. Uh, having found something, I think it's your parental responsibility to have a conversation about it. But Even you if don't. You found it by accident. Well, yes, of course. Of course you must, because you're in possession of certain knowledge now, which as a parent is, is, is very relevant to you and to your child. And I do think you have to take action, but you've got to plan it in, a, in order to achieve success, not in order to achieve your child walking out on you. And I think that you wouldn't go in shaking a packet of condoms or the packet of pills either. You would start a conversation about, you know, what are, what are the 
the boys and girls that you're associating with, what are they doing about would, it? Would you see it as a cause for celebration that there were condoms there? Uh, in one way, I would, because he is also taking action to prevent a pregnancy and to have safe, safe sex and not get a sexually transmitted disease. But the thing, the crucial bit here, though, is that she's 15. And at 15, it's against the law. So, Maybe it's just to regulate her periods or prevent her getting acne well, and all those other excuses. You that are I've right. Had over the years. And yes. And that's why you mustn't jump in. You've actually got to do a little, have a, an exploratory conversation beforehand okay. because she may not be having sex. I've got to jump in as well because I want to get some callers okay. on there, the people that are taking out the time to call us. We appreciate that. Amy, what do they have to say? Uh, we've got Karen from Bristol who wants some advice. She's on line one. Morning, Karen. Hi. Good morning. Hi there, Miriam's here. What's up? What's the question? Uh, um, I have my 12-year-old grandson, but well, he's nearly 13. He right. has a girlfriend. And... Um, she spends a lot of time in the bedroom with her, and it's very difficult. So I think they're probably quite innocent, but I don't know. This might be up to things he's not supposed to be, and I don't know quite how to deal with it. Right, good Karen, question. I think you're within your rights. You have to say that they sleep in separate rooms. Uh, but during what about the during the day? What about during the day? Uh, upstairs, oh, upstairs with the in, the, yeah, yeah. In, the, in the bedroom. Um, well, I think you, the, you know, you can just say, in our house, we have house rules. Uh, I'm afraid that, uh, not I'm afraid, the, the door, you've got to keep the bedroom door open. And, um, you know, just the same as I don't want your music to be too loud. Um, or I don't think that you should be staying up until midnight just because you're with me. Uh, I think you should be going to bed at a proper time. So you would introduce it simply as, uh, with Granny, we don't, we don't uh, close bedroom doors. When we're together in the I, I have to say, I think the bedroom door, because I'm just at Karen, you were 12, 13, when I was 13, thing, you know, yes, okay, <laughs> okay, and uh, I wasn't allowed, if I recall, until I was 14 to take a girlfriend upstairs. But uh, the door open rule is an amazingly effective way yeah. of keeping hormonally charged, randy, preteen <laughs> children under control, I think. Karen. And you see, Gra uh, um, Karen, you're in a very strong position because he could say, well, at home, you know, Mum allowed. You say, sorry, this is at Granny's house, and at Granny's house, we don't do that things that way. So you just have to accept it when you're with me. Do you, and what do you just out of interest, your views on sleepovers when children are little at 16? If, if a child of 60 or a child of 16 wants to have their boyfriend over, would you say, would you say yes? Yeah, I think that, yeah, at 16, listen. You would say, you would say yes at 16? Yes, I would, because if you're, you, at, 16, you, at 16, you can't stop your children having sex. And I think that it's, and they'd have it somewhere else and somewhere very uncomfortable. It's better okay. to know where they are. Okay, uncomfortable. That brings back memories <laughs> as well. Uh, Karen, thank you for the call. That is your lot for the day, for the week as well. Huge thank you to Miriam for joining us. And I get the feeling we're going to be arguing off camera as well as things go on. A big thumbs up to every one of you who picked up the phone. If you didn't get through, and I know a few of you didn't today, Parent Line Plus may be able to help on some of those issues. 0808 800 2222. Uh, that's the number. I'm back next week. Lovely Larry, talent, uh, to Larry Turner and TV talent judge David Ian on the panel. Uh, special guests include Andy Abraham, the man robbed at Eurovision last week, Suzanne Shaw and opera star Leslie Garrett. How can you miss that? Don't. See you Monday at 9. <laughs> <laughs>